What's up, everybody? This is uh, the SOS Podcast. Welcome. Glad you're here. I'm uh, George, the unicorn in human form. We got Hans, Hans Butansky. What's up? What a doo-doo. Episode 21. Episode 21. It's been a, it's been of a, it's been of a, a, a journey. It's sure. definitely been a journey. A bit of a journey, yeah. For sure. And today we have, what is your name? Ivana Saliper. Ivana Saliper, we got the thing. Oh, we don't have the thing. Uh, we'll add it in later. Okay. <laughs> if we can. Because we usually have a little, like, okay. a round of yeah. applause. Okay. Welcome, welcome. Thank How are you, you doing you. today, Ivana? I'm fabulous. How are you guys? We're all right. Thank you We're for right. having me. Oh, thank you for being thank, here. Yeah, thank you for making some time for us. I know you've been, you got a tight schedule in Chicago, so. Thank you, Hans. <laughs> it's been a bit of, it's been a bit of a roller coaster trying to get this going, so. Yes, yes, but I finally made it. So. Yes. <laughs> how, how long have we been kind of planning this out? Uh, I mean, if we're going to talk about from the time of her band, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> then yes. it'd be months of planning. If we're talking about just a Valentine's Day episode, it'll probably be a couple weeks then. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, this is our. I guess official, unofficial Valentine's Day episode, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why we have you here. What, what do you tell us a little bit about yourself, Ivana? What do you do? Um, well, aside from music uh, and singing, I am a licensed sex therapist. I do have a master in psychology, uh, clinical psychology, but my specialty is sex therapy. Awesome. So awesome. that is what I do. And how long have you have you two been knowing each other? Uh, shit, since fucking college <laughs> <laughs> what is that 15 years now yes oh my gosh we're old we are oh, <laughs> college yeah yeah we've known each other since college uh that's how we met met through our friend larry uh, yes. good old larry <laughs> good old larry <laughs> <laughs> it's not it wasn't crazy larry was it from around the way no not that larry <laughs> not crazy larry uh no this is a completely different larry i don't know if you know this larry you may you may have seen him cigars and stripes doing stand-up but that's about it no, yes um, <laughs> shout out to larry though yeah shout out to larry yes <laughs> Handlebar Larry. Yes. <laughs> Inside jokes. Uh, no, 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 no. That's actually his stage name, Handlebar yes. Larry. Oh, that's he has a handle. He has a handlebar mustache. That's why. Oh, nice. Or at least he used to. He used to have a handlebar mustache. So. Is that the one that curls up, or is that yep. the one that kind of goes? One, yeah. Yep, that is the one. Yeah. He may still have it. I don't know. I haven't seen him in a Last while. I saw him at a Mystic Expo type thing uh, in Chicago that was hosted by Ziomira. Um, he didn't have it at the time, but he did have purple hair. Oh, okay. so he's still he's still eccentric with his looks. He has the <laughs> cutest puppies ever. I, I love animals. I'm sorry. I, I won't go off topic. But anyway, <laughs> what kind of dogs does he have? Um, Let's go off topic. Sorry. The corgis, you know, oh, with the cute big little. Booty corgis. Yes, they're so cute. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> They got they got some big asses those corgis. Yeah, they do. <laughs> it's, it's unsettlingly big. Like you ever see them just walk, kind of waddle along. You're just like, Ugh. is there a, yeah. is there a turn on for you? For that? No, no, absolutely not. It's just goofy looking, you know. So on what? A dog. What secretly turns you both on? Let's see. <laughs> I wonder. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, I turn you on. Yeah, you turn me on. There we go. <laughs> Every time I come in the car and you start singing to me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which now I have. I actually do that. I, <laughs> I, I, always play, I always play some sappy love song. Oh, that's very sweet. I think it's funny as hell. See, he's showing you affection and love. It's about that's the only affection I've been getting these days. Oh, so. no. So, I'll pick, <laughs> so typically I'll pick him up and I, I always see his neighbors out. So I blast something like mini Rippertons, like. Loving you. <laughs> the other time it was what was it? Uh, uh, I think you were playing boys, boys to men. men. You were playing boys to men last time. We're I just... think you said something about that, didn't you? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember. Think it's hilarious. That. That's yeah. that's very sweet. But where are the like the videos of this? Uh, I have the footage of it. Uh, I may have put it on my Instagram stories at some point, but yeah. I have the footage. Yeah. That footage will be out eventually. I am working on a side project, but okay, eventually it'll yeah. come out. 
and you'll see George sexually harassing me. Okay. <laughs> um, With my voice. Yes. Uh, do you have I, a good voice? No. <laughs> <laughs> Do you hear how I talk? What is that? that has nothing to do with it. <laughs> uh, yeah, just, some people have like a naturally good voice for singing. I don't. I don't think this voice sounds very good singing anything. You know what I mean? Well, like I could hit a tune a little bit. Yeah. Uh, musically inclined, but you have a voice made for the accordion. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> What a compliment. <laughs> he, he plays the accordion, that's why. Yeah. Well, I played the accordion. He played. Yeah. I, I literally, you know that saying, if you use it, if you don't use it, you lose it. That's what happened. That's like one of the most years. popular instruments in my country. Oh, yeah? The Balkans and Serbia, it's the accordion. Yeah. yeah. So like when you go to all the crazy ass weddings that last for three days, there's always an accordion player and his accordion is just filled with like hundreds upon hundreds of dollars that he's getting in tips so oh, wow. in the wrong country you're <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so that kind of money like i'll be out there like the whole belly dancing get up <laughs> the little jinglies and everything oh, yeah. shake your head oh, yeah. once in a while double the tips uh -huh. oh yeah wait so serbian weddings last for like three days kind of like a or days for yeah. like indian weddings yeah, it's um, it's like it used to be um, it used to happen a lot more often mm -hmm. in the Balkans, mm -hmm. like where they would just traditionally they would la they usually last for days. OK. And there's all these different traditions in like smaller, you know, like villages in Serbia as well, where, you know, they start off where like the groom goes and like picks up the bride and then the bride like steps on gold and, you know, like jewels and shit that they throw. Am I allowed to swear? Yeah, you can yeah, swear. You can OK. Swear. <laughs> <laughs> we are not a PG-13. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, like, you know, she'll step on all this, like, this gold and all this jewelry and money that they throw at her. And then, you know, he'll pick her up and then they'll go to, to his house and then they'll go pick up the groom and the bride. And then they'll do some other weird ass traditions. And then they literally party and drink and eat and listen to music for hours upon hours upon hours. Oh shit. Okay. Um, it like goes into the next day and it keeps going. Yes. Yeah, so it just, it just kind of keeps, keeps going. So, All right. <laughs> yeah. so yeah, <laughs> it's I'd, a huge celebration. I feel like I'm the first one out of parties. Like, there's a party. I'm like, I'm ready to go home. See, you you haven't been to the right party. I would I would think. I haven't. I guess I've never been to the right yeah. party. Yeah, you haven't been to the right party because you know, um, with with all my music stuff, and I know we, we're not supposed to get into it right away, but I can I can at least say something. Sorry, so I what? I sang at a, uh, uh, a, it was a mixed wedding. It was a Serbian uh, bride, and uh, no, I I lied. It was a. Serbian groom and the bride was from Saudi Arabia and her parents were some sort of ambassadors to something. Oh, okay. Shit. So the wedding was sick. Okay. Oh, like oh. sick, sick, sick. They called my band and they called this, you know, Middle Eastern band to come and perform as well. Wow, okay. And they have, they had this ridiculous chocolate fountain and the silverware was made of gold. I mean, just, ridiculous right like, over the top <laughs> stuff and you could yeah. see the serbian guy you know he was just sitting there like a good boy you know just nodding because he just <laughs> married into a rich ass family you yeah know? i'm sure <laughs> but the money that yeah, i'd was, have been falling in line too <laughs> yeah the money that was flying at the band was just I've, I've, i mean i've never seen anything like it really Damn. it was it was nuts that's right. awesome <laughs> it was a good night i'm telling you that was a party so Again, you haven't been to the right party. We need we need to crash the weddings that she goes to. I know, yes. right? <laughs> Lots of like, yeah, I'm with the band. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what I'm do you do? Promotions, promotions, <laughs> and stuff. Stuff. <laughs> yes, stuff. What's the name of your band? So, it's the Balkan Groove Band. Okay. okay. Yeah, um, but sometimes we don't always work together. Sometimes we'll like work with other other musicians. So, and when we do that, we don't. There's really no name, you know, because okay. they usually like people who request us. They'll just call me and or they'll call my guitar player or my keyboard player and okay. say, you know, hey, we want this singer and this keyboard player and you know, so. Oh, so they pick and choose you guys at this point. Sometimes they do, but I want to say eighty percent of the time we just we come as a band. Okay. So, gotcha. Yeah. What yeah. kind of music is it? So it's it's Serbian music. It's, um, it's a lot of it's 
very traditional Serbian folk like style folklore. music. Yeah, but a lot of it, um, believe it or not, all the upbeat stuff, um, it's all reggaeton tone beat. Oh, okay. It's all just like very really? upbeat boom, reggaeton. Boom, 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 boom. The, like, yeah, like okay. most of the upbeat stuff has the reggaeton tone. Okay. And then the other stuff is all just like pop rock, you uh, know, yeah. stuff. Uh, so. I think I've seen you. I think I've seen you do covers of uh, some songs. I don't know. Yes. Can't think of off the top of my head what they are, but I know I've seen you sing covers before. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we usually always do that just for like, you know, little promo stuff on yeah. Facebook <laughs> and Insta. So. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Nice. And uh, so you guys travel then? We do, yes. Go everywhere? Yes. All right, that's awesome. M- mostly all over the States. So. And it's usually like, People who are like Serbian heritage, they're looking for yes, exactly that, that yeah. type of music. Um, but it's mostly just well nowadays. Ever since I moved to Colorado, nowadays it's just me coming to Chicago to perform because the Serbian community here is like there's a half a million Serbian people in Chicago. Oh shit! So, what cities have like like? That you frequent have like larger. Is this one of the largest Serbian? Chicago has the largest Serbian community. Oh, wow. Really? Okay. Like, yeah, in the world, you know. Oh, wow. Next to Serbia. Serbia. <laughs> Naturally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, quite that quite a large. I didn't know. There's restaurants, cafes, and. Oh, you got to yeah. point me in the direction of a good one. It's good food. Uh, I bet it is. I remember looking at the menu at the show that I was going to yes. see you at. Yes. Um, and like I was getting hungry just looking at the menu and I was looking, I swear to God, I was looking forward to it just for the food. Like, I'm sorry. You came in second that time. <sighs> <That's okay. laughs> I guess. <laughs> but uh, what's it called? Yeah. I was looking, I was looking forward toward the food because like that menu looked fucking delicious. And then yeah. I just couldn't make it because I was seriously running on ga- like fumes. Yeah, I know, I know. But if you do go, like, just be warned that if you do order, like, a burger, it's not going to be this tiny little patty, oh, you know? It's, yeah. like... Good. It's freaking <laughs> that's how big. Should, that's how a burger should be. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's insane. The The portions are just ridiculous. It's lots of meat lots and bread. Lots of beef bread. or lamb, or what is it? Lots of beef. I, I would say mostly beef and lamb. Okay. Um, lots of pork, too. Okay. okay. Yeah chicken isn't as popular so got it it is of course but not as popular as beef and, and pork and all it's just it's a lot of just meat cheese bread like <laughs> that potatoes like that's really what it's based around i feel like it's like uh you, you ever see those like the king's dinners feasts and they got like the grapes and the cheese and yes. a bunch of so no shit when i was looking at the menu that's exactly what it looked like which yeah. is part of the reason why i was getting kind of hungry because i was like uh all right so i'm just gonna keep my stomach empty because obviously <laughs> yes. there's gonna be a lot of food when i get there <laughs> yeah the portions are huge so yeah nice you guys can keep talking. I'm just. Oh. <laughs> oh, I wasn't sure. If you're stopping or not? No, no, no. I wasn't stopping. I was just making sure the stream was good. So we got. It. So you're you're also a sex therapist. I am. Yes. So in light of Valentine's Day, we kind of were. That's why we were pushing to have you over here. Mm-hmm. Understood. Understood. Yeah. <laughs> Wanted to get into the topic of love. Oh, yeah, of course. Love. Physical, love and physical love. Love and love making. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, why sex therapy anyway? Well, um, it's definitely a a vast subject, but just the gist of it is sex therapy, um, helps, uh, people as well as couples, um, work on their sexual issues, uh, mostly, um, if that is sort of the last resort, um, and if they're having sexual issues, sex therapy helps uh, both the couples and, of course, the individual um, either heal or work on or fix um, the issues that they're dealing with. Gotcha. Uh, mostly sexually related. So you, you have a degree in psychology? I do, yes. Okay. So why specifically did you go into sex therapy or get licensed for sex therapy rather than any other field in psychology? Well, um, I don't... <laughs> I hate to say this, but um, just look at the divorce rate in the United States. Um, It's a lot of work, you know, and a lot of people need help um, in this field. A lot of people are struggling, you know, and so 
I think that the divorce rate has now surpassed 50% for sure in the wow. United okay. States. I didn't realize that. Yeah. So um, I, a lot of people are needing sex therapy. Even There's even people who don't realize that they need sex therapy. Okay. So, and um, then when push comes to shove, you know, or when shit hits the fan, you know, people just kind of split up and everything goes south. But there are people who take sex therapy as, like I said, the, the, the very last resort. Um, and they come to me or my, my colleagues and, and seek help to um, try to work on their relationships or their individual sexual issues. Gotcha. So I guess my question is why, instead of like couples counseling, uh, mm -hmm. why, uh, why sex therapy? I mean, I know it kind of sounds like a redundant question, but I guess like out of all the fields you could have gone into, like, why did you go with that route instead? Well, I mean, counseling. So a lot of people can become a counselor okay. very, very easily with, without a degree. Okay. And there are counselors without a degree. Yeah. And so I don't feel, and again, nothing, absolutely nothing against anybody who does counseling. But I think when you're coming in for something as specific as sex related issues, mm -hmm. um, a sex therapist is the proper person that would probably be able to help more, um, but again, my interest was more sex therapy related. Gotcha. As opposed to just doing just, you know, basic counseling when someone comes in and says, you know, just, I, I don't, again, I'm not trying to offend anybody in any way. It's just uh, with the topics that I work with and the people that I work with, it's, it's a little bit deeper than, you know, just basic counseling or people coming in, you know, just to be listened to. Yeah. I, okay. Yeah, I, yeah, I I participate in in this uh, in the sense where I I am attempting to give you know the best advice possible to, and especially when it comes to marriage counseling, to allow both people to express themselves properly, at you know in the same room with me to say what they need to say, and to see if there is a chance you know for, for things to be healed or reconciled and and whatnot. Gotcha. Yeah. It's probably more. Uh, Kind of a more fun subject too to be talking it is. about. Getting, <laughs> it yeah, is. as opposed to like you know, you, you get a couple and they're just they're arguing about finances or, you know, or he's not going out enough and you know I want to do this. Or, yeah, like stuff whatever. like that or is like not really my. Bickering. I mean, it is you know of course that's always you know the issue and it usually tends to be the very first thing that people bring up mm -hmm. is. Um, finances or you know he's always spending too much on this or she's always spending too much on this and we're having money issues and then you know the very first thing that follows after that usually tends to be well he's not paying enough attention to me or she's not paying enough attention to me and so you know anytime there's problem with finances and anything else it's always very closely related to sex because mm -hmm. it affects your sex life instantaneously yeah. Yeah, you so. get turned off Exactly. Just... Yeah. So, I mean, it's all very, very closely related. <clears throat> so what happens in the bedroom is a reflection of what's going on over and overall in the relationship then? Well, I would say most of the time. time yes. Okay. Yeah. Most of the time. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, and of course I'm not, um, adding people who, um, have sexual trauma in, in this. Um, right. yeah, right. like yeah. it's, that's, that's a separate, very, very separate, uh, topic gotcha okay. yeah but you f you focus on couples i do or, or I, do you have more couple? you just have i do more couple i do clients. yeah i do i do focus more on couples but i do also have patients you know individuals um who do seek a sex therapy um, because they have certain issues that they want to uh, deal with and work on to be able to better function in a relationship with somebody else right okay gotcha so yeah, because there's, um, you know, a lot of times I'll get, I'll get people who come in who are already in a relationship, and they want to just speak to me by themselves individually. They don't want to get their partner involved. Which, depending on the situation, sometimes okay, that's fine. You know, I will certainly do that, of course. Um, but most of these problems always do require both of them to seek sex therapy. Right. Yeah. You know. So, but yeah. <clears throat> there was a show I, I saw clips of where they it was like a troubled marriage 
and then all of a sudden they 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 get thrown together and there's a sex therapist involved i think but they kind of put them in a room and they they say okay seven days you're gonna be oh yeah God, jack rabbits you <laughs> saw that one what, what, what is it i don't know the name of I, no but that's i'm a, sure it works <laughs> Uh, you know, setting the mood like you don't have you're not doing that, putting in the effort to figuring out and oh, you got to put all this together. If somebody does it for you, you just have have a ball. You just go into the room and like you two will fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it works though. You know, maybe sometimes, yeah, maybe. Probably and then doesn't. just to clarify, you're not sitting there in the bedroom like coaching them. <laughs> right. That that would be very interesting. That would be a great reality show or, or some sort of movie. Okay, now no, move a little. <laughs> you're directing. Lift, lift your legs a little bit more. <laughs> it's like yes, there is some pleasure in that back area, but it's more into the front. So just focus on that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now talk dirty to him. <laughs> just take a note in the corner <laughs> don't mind me just pretend i'm not oh, in the room just, just continue <laughs> it's, it's all right <laughs> just looking at my watch okay guys right. come on hurry it up <laughs> so like when couples get together like what do you think is a proper foundation for for them to just kind of like um i guess to create a healthy relationship between between them the number one thing is communication and i'll say this to absolutely everybody like the foundation to any relationship is you have to have good communication. Um, it, it's, it's not going to work if you are keeping things from your partner. It's not going to work if, if your partner is keeping things from you, even if it's the most basic things, you know? Um, and when it comes to sex, if they're keeping something from you that they find pleasurable, for example, or, you know, even that you find pleasurable, you don't want to bring it up because mm. you're afraid yeah. of their reaction. You know, like if you're if you're not comfortable enough to communicate with your partner, um, you know, then there's definitely an issue there that needs to be worked on. You okay. know, so but the foundation to <clears throat> excuse me, most relationships is communication. Do you feel like there's any such thing as over communication? Well, I think it really just depends on the couple. Okay. You know, so Let's say that I'll use you, I'll use you as an example. Go okay. Ahead. Let's say, I mean, you, I know you, right? So yeah. you seem to be a very communicative person, right? Uh, I will say nowadays I am. Um, okay. In the past, I have had problems expressing my own uh, thoughts and feelings. Um, mostly because I, it, it stems from, like anything else, it stems from trauma. So a lot right. of the times whenever I did express a thought or when I did express my feelings about myself, uh, it was always met with some sort of negative reaction. Either I'm told for being a pussy about talking about uh, my dying best friend or uh, what's it called? Um, you know, something along those lines, right? Right. Um, so okay. it becomes, so I, I translate that in the back of my mind as like, okay, nobody wants to hear your shit. Nobody wants to hear your thoughts or feelings. Shut the fuck up and just, you know, dance clown. That's a terrible, terrible thing <laughs> and it has to taken, tell yourself. Yes, and it has taken, it has taken um, I want to say, the past like four months for me to really realize that um, that's, that is an issue with me about not being able to talk about my thoughts or feelings. Um, in the last like four or five months um, is something I've been reflecting on and trying to just improve upon. So, Okay. But, um, I yeah. mean, yeah, there's... <sighs> You'll have to give me a good example of over communication because for me, in my opinion, there's no such thing. You know, if two people can have a healthy conversation about, you know, pretty much everything um, at all times, you know, and, and, you know, not keep things from each other that's going to affect your relationship directly. I'm, I'm all for it. Okay. So uh, you'd have to give me a pretty extreme example of over communicating. So let's say, <laughs> let's say, let's talk about like uh, a new couple, for example. Um, okay. Um, using me as an example again, I think I told you this morning about uh, what's it called? <laughs> Some, a chick who told me that she uh, felt like she was a rebound. The reason why she felt that way is because I was uh, telling her about my, if anybody asks about what happened with my ex, I tell them in full detail. At first, I will admit I do kind of do like a little test. I'm just kind of just giving mm -hmm. just the gist of it. I'm like, this is what happened. Then if they ask why, then I go into the full details. Okay. Uh, everything starting from 
what's it called? Years before we started, years before uh, my marriage uh, and all that other crap. So I go into full detail about the entire thing. But so the way that I look at it, so if you're, I mean, I don't, I wouldn't call that as over communicating. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're you're literally being upfront about certain baggage that you may carry or certain issues or certain traumas that may have happened to you. You're being, you're opening up to this person. You're, you're being as transparent as possible, you know? And I think but just the way I looked at it too, but right. And, but <laughs> I don't, and I think that there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And that's, that's how you should be. You mm. should be yourself, you know, yeah. because if you're continuously wearing masks, you know, throughout the relationship and they, down the line eventually start all falling off you know it may not be what uh, you you may not be as compatible or the other person may not see you as compatible or vice versa whatever the case may be um with people that you're just meeting or people that you may be interested in like and in, in, in you're dating mm -hmm. if it was me like from my perspective i would be as transparent as possible about everything and all the baggage and all the traumas and all the issues and who I am as a person, because if that person does not accept that and kind of gets in your face and is like, okay, well, you know, I don't give a shit or why are you even telling me this? Then that person is not right for you. You know, you're, and so it's, you're eliminating people that do not, you know, that are not right for you. People that don't respect you, people that don't care about you. Yeah. And I know that may sound extreme, but I personally, just personally speaking, I am more uh, for just removing masks and being transparent and being true to yourself as opposed to holding back and, you know, wearing masks and whatnot. I mean, obviously, um, like let's say you meet somebody now and you've seen them for two days and you just unload all this stuff on them after two days, you know, that may be <laughs> an issue for, <laughs> for right. that person. Cause they've only Fair. known you for yeah. two days. Yeah. But you know, if it's somebody you've known, you know, or you're dating and I, I would, yeah, I would definitely just be yourself. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah. After a few dates, I think. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. 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 Gotcha. yeah, yeah. You don't want to just hit them with the, <laughs> with the shit right off the bat. Yeah, uh, no, right, yeah, is, yeah, yeah. Let me give you the spiel. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, my name is Hans. I'm divorced. Uh, <laughs> I'm suffering. Right. I'm suffering. <laughs> oh, my God. I live with my parents. <laughs> There's all these just sellable aspects about myself this far. Just want to let all that out. <laughs> well, the first girl that says, oh, that's great. I, I don't care. <laughs> that's that's when I know it's the one. I'm like, yes. Okay. All right. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> and then if um, and then you know if she comes at you and you know she's like, well, you know, that's great. You know, I live with my parents and I'm uh, I'm also separated and I also um, I have a fetish. Uh, <laughs> 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 How are you gonna accept that? I have a foot fetish. I got to say it's so creepy. <laughs> it's uh, Quentin Tarantino over here. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> so how long, how long have you been doing this sex therapy? So I want to say it's been four years now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Four years. Because I was really curious. So when did all this, like, I mean social media kind of blew up like 15 after 15 like blew up blew up right yeah Instagram and all that so like i was really curious i i, I was hoping you were doing it since before to, to to ask you like if you've seen any difference like from before there's or, a huge difference right there should be there's right? a huge difference with couples that you know have been together even before the internet blew up and stuff like that who are now very much affected by this you know so it has affected relationships in in such a way that i think a lot of people um are feeling more and more lonely next to their partner than they've ever been yeah. because mm. of of social media um you know for for people who are single and you know people who are searching tinder and i don't know all these other 
I don't know what they're called, but yeah. Tender, hilly, plenty of fish, uh, eating harmony, match. Okay, well. <laughs> knows them all. I, I know them all. Bumble. Okay. <laughs> Grinder. Well. Uh, definitely not familiar <laughs> with Grinder. <laughs> oh, oh well, Hans knows um, everything. Okay know. then. Not familiar with Grinder. Let me let me, <laughs> let me express that I am not familiar with Grinder. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. Exits only. <laughs> That's hilarious. Well, yeah. I mean, all of these all of these platforms have just affected couples. It's not realistic. Okay. Mm-hmm. There's right. We're talking about not just dating apps. We're talking about like, you know, your yes. social media apps. Too. Yeah. Your yes. social media. None of it's realistic. Mm-hmm. You know, people's expectations have drastically changed. Yep. You know, and it's the same. It's, well, I, I wouldn't say it's the same thing, but it's similar with porn. So, you know, people who have addiction to porn as well, you know, their expectations of real life you know, uh, sexual affection or intercourse is just, it, no, it's mm. completely different. Yeah. Right. Um, f- most of the time, every time that I've encountered somebody that did have a porn addiction. So, but yeah, I mean, the expectations are completely different. Um, there's very few people, and I, I hate to say this girls, but mostly women who are, you know, posting pictures of themselves that, you know, are, with with filters and it doesn't look like them mm-hmm. you know and yep. I'm, I'm not saying men you know don't do this too where they post pictures you know what they look like 10 years ago or you know whatnot but but women are doing this a lot more and those are most the, most of the time the complaints that i'm getting you know is like well nothing like the picture not nothing like the description <laughs> you know and it's just bad news. In my opinion, it's all it's bad news. I have to so on my uh, Tinder account, I think it's just become one big meme for me because like <laughs> like my di- whole entire description is just all satire. So like the first line on my Tinder account, I think it says like I take the dumb I use the dumbest pictures of myself because I don't have a pro- I don't have a professional photographer. Um, because it's like literally the fucking dumbest <laughs> fucking photos of myself. Um, it's like me just out in the wild, just like just me being obnoxious, like just me being my fucking self, screaming at a fucking baseball game and shit. Um, what's it called? I think I photoshopped my face on a on a bamboo, or bamboo on a uh, fucking the monkey baboon baboon. baboon. There we go. Okay. <laughs> baboon, yeah. Um, and like I have all those photos on there. Like it's it, it's literally fucking dumb photos because what you were saying about the expectations on um on social media for that matter, which includes dating apps, I've noticed like every chick that I come across and with their photos, I want to say 90% of them, I swear to God, it looks like they've taken professional pictures. And I'm yes. just kind of like, yes. for what? Like Exactly, yeah. <laughs> exactly, no. And, and the, the one thing statistically with social media that, that has been absolutely proven is that couples, for example, that post constantly pictures of themselves on Facebook and Instagram and just, just literally spamming everybody with their shit, you know, mm-hmm. it's like, look at us, we're so happy, you know, and just we're here, we're here now and we're eating this food and we're going here now. Like statistically, these couples are very unhappy, Okay. you know, <laughs> I and I, I'm serious, like <laughs> statistically, this has been proven to be true. Yeah. And the couples that post the least amount of content of themselves on social media and like, don't talk about their business tend to be you know the happiest because they don't need They're to focus on themselves more you know right yeah. exactly yeah. like what like entertaining the masses so. right like <laughs> who do you need to prove your relationship to you know like who are you trying to prove yourself to and right. why would you give a shit what other people you know think about you or your relationship yeah for sure so yeah <clears throat> it's interesting it's interesting how social media works because like so I quit social media for a while. Um, I know we're kind of diving off topic a little bit, but like I quit social media for a while um, because uh, I just couldn't stand the vitriol anymore. Um, the only reason why I got back into social media was just because of the show and like I and try to create an audience for myself um, to just kind of funnel over here. <laughs> but like I realized very quickly and I even when I'm talking to like other creators out mm-hmm. there, 
um, that there is there is a social media face and then there's your private face. Right. Um, that social media face, yes, the show must go on all the time, but like you have to like take care of yourself, like for sure. Like if you need you to do. step away from that shit, you need to step away. You from do, that. and it's an addiction. It's really a true addiction. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, I mean, there's people who are just. You know, who have children, for example, they're they're just, you know, their children are, are, are sitting there playing and they're completely being ignored because you're scrolling on Facebook or on Instagram. And there has been multiple times where I have caught myself doing this, like during the nighttime where, you know, like I'm just so exhausted from from the day and I just want to just shut my brain off and the best way to do that is just scroll and look at stupid shit and not think yep. about anything <laughs> you know and my son is there and he's like mama you know let, let's play and i'm just like oh my god you know like i've been ignoring him for the last hour you know so <laughs> i catch myself doing the same thing it's very much an addiction and it's yeah. quite the dangerous one so yeah. it impacts everything you know from relationships to just to you you know your to yourself and everything else so yeah what about a uh, so couples who uh, let's say like they create content uh, for uh, OnlyFans, for example? Um, okay. <laughs> like, OnlyFans. Uh, yeah. <laughs> OnlyFans. I have a huge problem with OnlyFans. I oh, really do. Really. <laughs> I do. If you're gonna do shit like that, just get into like professional porn. Just <laughs> just just become a professional porn star, and get paid really good money for it. Okay. If you're going to do shit like that and expose yourself, like just, just do it. Go to fucking Los Angeles. Go to Vivid Entertainment and be like, hey, I want to be a fucking porn star. Pay me thousands of dollars and I'll do. I mean, I just I just don't like OnlyFans. OK, I, I, I really <laughs> I, I really don't. I have a big problem with it. Um, a lot of times, a lot of times, for, like the couples that come in, um, that, that, that have issues, um, most of the time, the woman addresses that the husband is following someone's OnlyFans. Okay, gotcha. Okay. <laughs> um, um, or that the husband has discovered that his wife is on OnlyFans. Okay. Uh, wives hide it. <laughs> yes. Wow. That so. is... Wow. That's about the most wildest thing I've heard since... Yes. Not getting an O in, in the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's there's quite a lot of um, women that are hiding this from from their from their husbands or from their boyfriends. You know that they, they have content on OnlyFans and you know, yeah. um, or even you know foot fetish sites where they're selling feet pics and you know making uh, thousands like of dollars. Feet per finder, month. yeah. Yeah. Um, so. So my friends tell me. Yeah, it's <laughs> that's really a thing. Feet Finder. Feet Finder is. A yeah, I thought it was a joke when people talk it's about it. It's become a meme a bit because oh, like wow. so many creators have like jumped on the Feet Finder uh, uh, like uh, advertisement train. Um, so like somebody will bring up Feet Finder or some shit like that. But it is a real website where you do fucking sell pictures. Yes, of feet, so. it's a big market. It's yeah. a huge market. It's one of the most popular fetishes. <laughs> Don't understand why. It's. Um, didn't I yeah. see something on your Instagram about feet? <laughs> What Probably if, somebody <laughs> asking me. So actually, I, I've, I've. Uh, it did involve so, his dog, because oh, dog licks yes, his feet. Yes, a yes. Dog licks. As a matter of fact, for my fucking Friday anonymous questions, I have one in the hole asking me, asking me for uh, a video of my dog licking no. my feet. <laughs> no shit. No. No. <laughs> That's very sweet. I, oh. Charge that person like a shit ton of money. I should. I should start charging for this. Yes. <laughs> yes. Jeez. Maybe I need to go on Feet Finder. Oh I, um, I, look, if that's what you feel you need to do. In this economy, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like eggs are like $10 <laughs> a dozen. Yeah, yeah. Should, yeah it's, it's crazy. Yeah, I can't have my English breakfast now just because of that. So in order to do that, I need to go on Feet Finder now. I, right. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Send me the link. <laughs> so, so foot fetishes is one of the most popular it, it very much you, is yes you see that more than anything i i do actually wow. yeah um there is um so like when statistics statistics have been done um i guess the region that um like the global region that is very much into feet happens to y usually be the middle east 
Um, okay. Strangely. Uh, that is, uh, I, can, yes. I can see that. Yeah. They, they cover everything. But. Yeah, everything else is covered <laughs> except four. <laughs> right. Um, I don't, I don't think, well, I don't think it has anything to do with the religion specifically, but right. um, it's very, uh, yeah, it, mostly the Middle Eastern uh, region tends to really be into feet. But I wonder if that's why, because they do cover up. But it could right? be. Well, and that's what, yeah. as a child, that's what you see more of. And you're right. just like growing up and you're like, oh, I see some feet. It could be, you know? yes. <laughs> like, who Look knows? at them ankles, God damn. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, feet, uh, yeah. Foot fetishes is one of is it, is the is most, among, most popular. Is it among males or is it females or is it just kind of split? I think it's uh, mostly males that okay. are really into into feet. Okay. So. I don't I don't get it. I really don't. Yeah, it's it's it is a little strange to me too. It's not for everyone. I, I don't want to yeah. talk shit and or, you know yeah. if you're into that. Right. I'm not gonna to kink you. shame. I won't I won't right. kink shame. Yeah. But like. <laughs> I don't get it. But it's not it for me. Strange. <laughs> it's it strange is. to me. Like to me, it just doesn't. I can't fathom how that's a turn on. Uh, like in the heat of the moment, yeah, okay, whatever. That's that's a different story. But like, just to be like specifically, like, no, I want to see your feet. Mm. Yeah. Well, and women have been taking just huge advantage of this because, of course, Naturally. they don't have to do much except you know show their feet or dip their feet into milk or sand or whatever the hell that they do. Yeah. You know? Or milk um, fence stand. Right. Yes. <laughs> so. Uh, breading. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, they're taking advantage of it, you know, because a lot of times, A, they don't have to show their face. And B, you know, they don't really have to do much except, you know, stuff with their feet. But then you have, like, you know, extreme content where they will, you know, do something with their partner, you right. know. Yeah, I got you. So, it's. With their feet. I have friends who are into that. Yeah. yeah. Not to put them on blast, but. <laughs> i'm not gonna mention names i'm not gonna mention names but i know friends who are into that i'm just kind of like i don't it's it. specific I'm... it's very very specific yes yeah. <laughs> and and i mean fetish right yeah so like the term itself means you can't get off without it right something like that this is my heard it, before. kind of yes i oh. mean you know there's or i mean that's what most is in there and there's right things. right and well there's people who very much prefer to just get off with that fetish right okay? right um they can get off otherwise mm -hmm. um but yeah, awesome. it okay. they would prefer prefer this but then there's people who cannot right. achieve an orgasm without it as well that's crazy yes yeah <laughs> you agree yes <laughs> um, well you know i'm of course no, right. i mean no no judgment to anyone there's right, always no a reason there's always a reason why why people have fetishes and why they prefer you know certain things and have sexual mm. preferences so out of curiosity like i might be using the wrong um ideology here but like is it kind of freudian where it's just like it's related to something that's happened in their childhood that's so most of the time yes okay most of the time, yes. Yeah. So a lot of times um, I've, I've come to the conclusion, especially when speaking with individuals who have, um, you know, specific fetishes that come to me because they have a hard time finding partners, you know, who can just kind of go with the flow and, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. provide them what they are needing. OK, they have a hard time with this. So um, a lot of times it is usually due to something that did happen in the childhood days, okay. some sort of trauma that happened. Okay. Okay. Um, and then they, they tend to get some, you know, PTSD from it and they just sort of, they deal with this. Everybody deals with, uh, with traumas very differently, yeah. you know? So, and a lot of times it, you know, develops into a sexual thing and that's how, you know, these people tend to release this sexual trauma each time, you know, is through this, through this fetish. Hmm. Okay. So, yeah. That's interesting. That is interesting. Yeah. <laughs> it, it stems from childhood things most time then. Yes. Yes, I would mm. say so. It's not like some allergy that you kind of grow into, like all of a sudden you're into it. Right. Yeah. I'm just into urinating. Like. <laughs> yeah. um, I think, you know, well, yeah, like most of the time, yeah, it is. You know, it is something that has happened, you know, mm. in, in the childhood as well. But then there are people who, um, you know, have really extreme fetishes that and, you know, those people, they didn't necessarily have something bad happen to them. They just um, 
there's certain wiring in the brain. Um, there are sociopaths out there um, that are just not very good people. And, you know, they, they take it out on other people and they will do some pretty disgusting and terrible shit you know, to the opposite sex or even to the same sex. So there's that as well. Obviously, it's not as common, you know, but again, childhood trauma usually tends to be the reason. So so when introducing like a kink in the bedroom, um, let's like, should another partner be like, let's say if you've been with someone for a year or so, right? And let's say... The female partner might be into pegging or some shit like that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, how do they engage in an open conversation about like, hey, listen, just so you know, I want to try this X Y Z out or something like that? Like, how do how do they have a healthy conversation about that? Well, I mean, first of all, it's really not as easy as it sounds to be able to just communicate with right. some, with somebody, especially when it comes to sexual things. Um, not everybody is as, is as open. And a lot of times people are afraid of the reaction that they're going to get, you know, Mm. from, from their partner. Um, so like if you've been together for a year, okay, I think that you should be able to be comfortable enough to discuss this with your partner and say like, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm, there's something I would like to try. How do you feel about it? You know, um, to push something onto somebody is not the right way to go. You know, uh, you, you may not get the reaction that you're seeking, you know? So like pushing something onto somebody or saying like, Hey, this is, this is what I want. This is what I'm into, you know, like deal with it. You know, that's definitely not the way to go into it or like, Hey, like this is me, you know, like if you can't accept me, then you're a piece of shit, you know, right? Yeah. again, wrong way to confront somebody about that. But yeah. if you've been together for a year, you should be able to have some pretty good, strong communication skills with each other to be able to present this and be like, Hey, what do you think? You know, can we, can we try this out? Are you comfortable with it? The point is, especially from, from a female perspective, if, you know, a, a girl, a woman needs to feel, feel very comfortable with, with her male partner, um, in pretty much every, every way possible. Okay. If you make her feel safe, if you make her feel comfortable in the sense that she can tell you anything and open up to you and you know, you're not going to react at her in a negative way and she feels comfortable, like that's, that's the number one thing because if she can feel this way, that means she can feel comfortable with you in the bedroom. It means that she can most likely orgasm with you um, because a lot of women have a hard time having an orgasm. Yes. At like almost 60, 70% of women cannot have an orgasm. Yeah. Um, and a lot of times this is due to the comfort um, in the relationship. So um, again, if she feels comfortable with you okay, and you guys right. are able to communicate this properly, I don't see why she wouldn't want to try something like this, Okay, you know, and vice versa, you know? Um, but generally historically speaking, um, and I'm not saying that women don't bring new things to the table, of course, but you know, men seem to be the ones uh, most of the time, you know, that would present something new initiators. Yes. Um, of course, again, women do it too, but, um, again, they need to feel really comfortable. And I think females in general need to feel this comfort and safety next to a man, you know, they need to feel that, okay, Hey, my man is a leader. Okay. But he's not telling me what to do. You know, my man is, you know, he keeps me safe, you know, but he's always going to be daring in the relationship you know in other ways Uh you know so he's the alpha male but you know he doesn't treat me like shit he treats me like a queen okay you know he makes me feel comfortable um and i didn't mean to go off topic but that is a huge topic because again most women have a really hard time having an orgasm and comfort is a huge huge thing insecurities a lot of women tend to be very insecure about their bodies yes um you know, and the entire time they, you know, a lot of women feel like they're being judged by their partners. And so to make her feel like she is 
like the most beautiful girl in the world. She is yours and like she is your woman and you love absolutely everything about her. You're just making her even more comfortable with you and making your sexual relationship even better and easier to communicate, you know, certain things or new things that you'd like to try. Okay. Um, that makes sense. Should a partner, should a partner always be kind of open to like any kink at least once consensually, of course? I mean, I would, I would say so, but you'd have to be specific. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really sure what kink you're talking about. But right. I mean, it's, it's, I mean yeah. kink can go, it's wide range, right? But right. Like, yes. Um, from as little as like a foot fetish to something extreme, like maybe a, pe a pegging fetish or something like that. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, if it's, if it's something, and I think, you know, all of it really just depends on your partner, mm -hmm. you know, it depends on how open your partner is. Mm -hmm. It depends on your current sexual relationship, you know, yeah. like, and your sex life. So it really just depends. Um, you know, cute, small stuff like that. I, I think that should definitely be tried if everybody's, you know, if, if the couple is open to it, um, something bigger, um, you know, it really just depends on the person. It depends, you know, what kind of sexual relationship you have with your partner. Gotcha. Give okay. it, a, give it a little bit of time. Yeah. 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 I mean, you have start to start small and then yeah. wait, a, get wait, a year before, yeah. wait a year before you tell your partner, you know, I feel like getting my balls smashed. Yeah. Yes. People are into that, right? People are into that. Yes. Have, you, have you ever well, seen that? I've um, not seen it in, in, in videos. I'm saying, seen it in your practice where um i think i've only had one uh, female patient who who happened um to so be like... a dominatrix oh, okay um where she but her case was very extreme she was very much traumatized by by um by a situation and she just didn't want to um, do it anymore <laughs> so she was hired for this situation. she was hired okay. yes for this um Gotcha. And and she was very very traumatized by this. Um, I can't imagine. She's she's still in therapy. Oh, wow. So yes. wait, she was hired to to dom, and then she yes, um, she hasn't gotten out of it, and she wants to. No, she well, no. She, she got out of it, but she's because of that that situation. That was the very last thing she was hired to do, this, and she stopped after that. Okay. Um, Her client asked something something very right? very extreme. I, I really. I don't, I can't get, you yeah, know, yeah, into no, no, no. it. Yeah, yeah, um, I, understand, but, I understand. But she was um, extremely traumatized and she is still in therapy to this day. Um, so there are people who are into, like I said, there, there's people who are into some crazy, crazy stuff out there. Mm. Um, but yes, a lot of people do uh, enjoy uh, getting, getting their balls smashed. Get, getting their balls smashed, yes. <laughs> a um, lot. Yeah, that's crazy <laughs> to me. Yeah. I can't, I can't. I can't take is that, is that your is that your kink? No, I can't take a flick like, <laughs> like let, alone, let alone getting stomped on, you know what I mean? I can't even handle a snag. Like <laughs> oh. my world is ended when I get a snag. I'm just, ah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. I'm on I'm on a fucking respirator and shit. <laughs> That's fine. Man, I don't understand that. Like anybody who's a guy will know what that pain is. Of course. Like. Of course. I can't imagine having that pain go up into your stomach. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, oh, I know. I know. You know what I'm talking I've, about, guys. You know what I'm talking I've about. I've had a frozen turkey fucking uh, smashed right into my fucking testicles. The worst fucking pain I've ever had. I'm How sorry. What? Wait, you, what? How did fuck you, Ricky, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> if you Why ever watch this, fuck you. I still haven't forgotten that shit. It was a frozen fucking turkey. Why? Would someone smash a frozen? So we get, we, uh, when I was working at UPS, we used to get free turkeys from there okay um and i used to carpool with ricky sean um and chris uh back home uh because we all worked at ups um ricky being the asshole that he was at the time <laughs> took his frozen turkey i was riding bitch at the time uh because i forgot who was the fifth person in our car at the time but i was riding bitch in the back seat ricky took his fucking turkey and fucking threw it right onto my lap oh. like okay. a dick frozen turkey. <laughs> oh. fuck you ricky <laughs> I well, still love you though. You said he was an asshole at the time. He's a he's a reformed asshole though. It's sort of, yes. <laughs> maybe, maybe he's he's got he's got a wife and kids maybe now. Maybe unfuck so. Ricky. Yeah. <laughs> Ricky, I think there uh, there are some uh, underlying issues that Hans needs to speak to you about. I think we should have a session. I think. Yeah. So. <laughs>
Not I mean, yet. it would count, right? I mean, because it is my genitalia. and Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll I... be the mediator. Of... <laughs> so, Ricky, why would you do this to Han? I mean, look at his balls. Look at them. Bro. Show, why? Show me both. <laughs> <laughs> I would, but uh, YouTube community guidelines. So. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can have naked yoga on there, but you, you, the moment you show a <laughs> testicle, that's that's when you cross the line. We've been swearing this whole time. Yeah. Yeah. I've been trying to be good and not swear. No, we're not monetized yet. So. No, yeah, we're not monetized. I don't even think. I, I don't think we will be because I don't think all this shit we say. Every will be. <laughs> yeah. But you know, we're just trying to build our little bla base. So. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but anyway. But yeah, I can't imagine you getting that pain into your stomach and then asking for more. You know what I mean? Or continuing. That's just I can't, I can't fathom that. Like I, I get pain in the bedroom, right? I get, I get a little pain in yeah, the bedroom. Yeah, yeah, playful pain in the bedroom. Right, that's right. fine. A little bit of that. But like, yeah, it's not for everyone. It's no, not, it's not for everyone. Everybody has very, very specific fetishes. Yes. Um, yeah. Um, so. Should we get a little personal? Just a tiny little bit personal. Sure. Okay. Go ahead. Not nothing too crazy, of course. But what is your kink? What just give us one. Give us one that's not extreme, something that, you know, you don't you don't have to get too personal, of course. But I, I just like literally had this conversation this past weekend. Um so uh, the stuff I'm into. Uh I'm into biting. I like deep scratches on my back. Um almost skin breaking. I don't know why. I don't know okay. why. That's okay. that's a See, thing. He, he he's he's on the border of um getting his ass it's beaten like, and like whipped. Masochism. And, oh, yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. You're 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 uh, retiring dominatrixes. So. Uh, probably. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. I like losing a little bit of control in the bedroom. Okay. Um. I think that's all I can think of for now. Say so as my majors. Okay. So. <laughs> what about I, you? I don't I don't think I'm too kinky. Like I like I like being a little more dominant, I guess you could say. But as far as kinks, I don't really have a kink per se. Like, so, mm -hmm. excuse me. Um, I did a I did a I did like a little quiz thing about like you know what's your kink or whatever, and apparently I am a rope bunny and a switch. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have been talking about pegging. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, switch switches uh, between uh, being dominant and being a sub in the in the right. Well, yeah, that kind of yeah. falls into an extreme. Yeah. Right, <laughs> of, of being a sub. Uh, the rope bunny part, I was a little, I was a little uh, thrown <laughs> off by. I was like, really? I I do like being. T I don't mind. I don't mind losing the control, but I didn't know I like being tied up like that. But ah, <laughs> uh, okay. When you said losing control, I thought. You'd kind of I, go I like the women. I like the woman to be a little more aggressive, a little more yeah. uh, um, so. leading in the bedroom, um, telling me what to do or whatever. So, um, what's it called? I so it, it's not just about like being tied up or anything like that, uh, which is what a rope bunny is, as opposed to a rigger, which is uh, the person who does who does all the fancy tying up and all. Uh, okay. so. This is um, my assistant Hans. He's the assistant to the sex therapist. He knows Hi. every every sexual term yeah. that, <laughs> that's out there. Too much time on the internet. <laughs> yeah. But no, I would I wouldn't say I have like a kink per se. There's not really something that I'm like, oh, I have to have that. Like mm -hmm. I'm into it. Like don't don't get me wrong. I've 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 had three ways. You know, I've tried bit things, but. I don't. I wouldn't say I have a, a specific kink. Got it. Yeah. Okay. I'm just kind of a little more dominant. I like being a little more dominant. That's okay. I'd say what it is. Okay. If if there if that is even a kink, I don't think that's a kink. Not unless you're like taking that extra step, you know. I guess. And what's the extra step? And being like, if you're tying her up, you know, or if you're. Uh, I mean, you know. yeah. I mean, you've you know, blindfolds, handcuffs. Uh, the, Play around. Okay, you know. well there you go. Yeah, but kind of similar. But to it's what not Hans like, but it's not that. something that I introduce every time or something. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course, yeah. Yeah. Okay, got it. You just, just gotta just get the business and go. <laughs> well, no, no, I, I, no, no, no. Actually, I, I, I really, really enjoy foreplay. Like I really yes. enjoy warming the warm up. That, and that is literally. I love that. The I one of the most important things, um, in any sexual relationship is role play. That is so important. So, oh, I, so I said foreplay, but role play. You you said 
uh, four play. Four play. Sorry, yeah. I I meant if I said role play, I that was my that was my kink. <laughs> my, <laughs> my, I was thinking about my kink. That my kink because I like role play. Okay. Um and and toys um to be used in the bedroom, but yeah. definitely role play. I don't mind using toys. Like I know but, some 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 guys are yes. against using toys yes. on their girls, but yes. I don't I don't mind using toys on them. I on used the to be I used to be against it because I I don't know I for some reason I. Uh, it's like you don't need it. Like I got this. It's not. It's not just that. I just didn't want anything bigger than me in the bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That that makes sense. That, well, yeah. A lot of guys do have a problem with that because, you you know, a lot of things I hear is like, well, how can I go against? You know, how can I compete with her vibrators? Yeah. Right. You know, it's like, she'll get off in thirty seconds with her vibrator, but with me, you know, it either doesn't happen or it takes forever. Mm. You know, so. Um, but that's that's a whole nother topic. What I what I was trying to say is that foreplay is is very very important. Yeah, yes, I it's agree. Extremely important. I'm, I'm very much into foreplay. Yeah, I like that's that. That's great. I'm yeah. I'm sure your girl is very satisfied then. <laughs> well, shout out Liz. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Lucky girl. <laughs> but yeah. Um. So. Yeah, foreplay. Um, role play. How about that? Role play. Yeah. My my king. Yeah, yeah. Like, or, <laughs> do do you like to do the role playing or do you like to, the guy? I, I think both of us have to partake in this. Like you do, like uh, like uh, I don't know, teacher student. Uh, so uh, um, so my husband and I we've we've tried a lot of different things. Um, so he's not. I can't say that he's as good. As as uh, you know, like role playing as as I am. As you are. Yes. Um, he. It was really when I first brought it up to him. He was like, "You want to do what now?" <laughs> 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 you know, because he's very, you know, he's he's a Serbian and he's very, you know, traditional, you know, in in a sense. And so, um, he's like, "You want you want to do what?" And you know, he's like, "I can't, I can't act." You know, how am I supposed? I'm like, "Well, just fucking do it." You know, like. <laughs> <laughs> just literally pretend. Literally worked for how she said, like, just fucking do it. Just, just, just There's pretend. There's communication you know? for you. Yeah, right. No, I know, right? Like, I can help everybody else except my own self and my my own relationship. I'm, I'm right there with you. Like, I, I can give the greatest advice to everybody else, but when it comes to following my yes. own advice, no, I just fucking yes. crash and burn. Well, I mean, when it comes to... Um, so yeah, we we you know we've we've tried various things, of course, but with uh, with role playing, I think um, it was hard for him at first, you know, to kind of get get into these different roles. And mm -hmm. we've tried so many different you know different roles, but the most successful one that we've had is where you know we would we would go to a bar, you know, and he or I would walk in first, you know, and somebody one of us would walk in second, and we would pretend like we didn't know each other, and try oh, to right. pick each other up, and you know, like so where we're going, my place or your place type of situation. And I think that um, was probably one of the best role playing situations gotcha. that we've had. You know, okay. Um, so like just so so it's not like just role playing in the bedroom. You're like. Oh, we took it a step further. Yeah, you, yeah you, we we you really took it a go step out of your further. Way to yeah, get this done. Like we'll usually like we will. Of course, we've tried stuff in the bedroom, you know. But like we took it a step further where we've, you know, You're gone. Acting it out. Yeah, like we're actually acting. Yeah, in public, like acting it out as as if we don't know each other or we know each other or we've seen each other somewhere before, and it always makes things very fun. I'm sorry, babe, if you're watching. I, <laughs> you told me not to discuss our sex life. Oh, I'm, not. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> there was this movie with um, uh, Vince Vaughn and the girl from Friends. Uh, oh, fuck. Uh, you talking oh, about the breakup? Um, Jennifer Yeah, Aniston. the breakup. Yeah, yeah, the breakup. That beginning scene. I, I always remember that because you just reminded me of that. Because um, there was that one where, what scene? where su supposedly they they go in there in that, at some club, and she's dancing, and uh, and he goes up to her, and he's like, um, I don't know, I forget how it goes, but um, she she was acting really interested, and then he was like, get over here, bitch, <laughs> you know, and oh. then she's like, oh, and then you're thinking like, oh shit, they just met, but they were role playing, oh. and then they get back to they're like, oh that was hot, and they go back oh, to their place. Okay, and, okay. Yeah. All right. I have to rewatch that 
It's movie. like the beginning scene. I, I, I never liked I Vince Vaughn. I just oh, I always thought Vince he was, he's just like an asshole. <laughs> he's I, man's he man, seems like of. an asshole. I never really liked his <laughs> movies, but I'll have to watch that movie. Anyway, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to go off topic. No, actually, oh, no. On, the, on, the subject on, of, on the subject of the uh, of the breakup, my favorite scene in there was when uh, Jennifer Aniston and uh, what's his face was uh, Vince Vaughn were arguing. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, what about your sister? I'm like, my sister's been through a lot. Oh. Yeah, of dick. Of dick. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That was okay. a good one. Yeah. It was a great movie. Now I want to rewatch movie. it, too. <laughs> yeah. Now I'll have to watch it, too, just for that beginning scene to see who stole my fucking idea. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta see it. That was a good one. And you're just going to watch it with your husband and be like, see, that's what I want you to do. Yes. <laughs> Just say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, earlier, you were talking about uh, what's it called? Like uh, women have self-esteem issues. Um, yes. Uh, a I mean, lot. Yeah. Um, I can kind of relate to that because I do also have self-esteem issues. I mean, well. we all do. Yes. Yeah. Yes. To a certain extent. Of course. How do you how do you get over that within the couple at the very least? Or like, what is it that a couple has to do, or what is it a partner has to do? To be like, hey, listen, like. You're beautiful to me. Like, you know, this little thing about you is not too bad at all. So, like, like how do they get over the – how do you get – how do you navigate through those self-esteem issues? So, self-esteem issues, the only way to navigate them is with yourself and only yourself. Your partner is not your therapist. Your partner is, is not one who can heal your personal self-esteem issues. And that's what a lot of people fail to realize a lot of times. Your happiness doesn't stem from your partner, um, you know, or somebody else. Your happiness stems from you. You have to make yourself happy. Nobody else is responsible for that. And you cannot expect anybody to make you happy and for you to just depend on that happiness because what if they just take that happiness away? You know, like what, what if it just disappears? What if it doesn't work out? You cannot... You know, a lot of people fail to realize like any self-esteem issues or generally issues that you may have with yourself is something that you have to work on by yourself with yourself. And if it's something that you share with your partner and your partner is aware of these issues or I guess these weaknesses about you, all they can really do is just encourage you okay. and, and, and push you to, to, to get through it, to get, you know, like, for example, like, look at this. I got a stomach. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't like my stomach. My husband knows I don't like my stomach, but he doesn't care about my stomach. You know, mm -hmm. you know, how could he next to these? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, he I mean, just gets distracted at that point. <laughs> <laughs> That's where it's. Yeah. It's, <laughs> no, but I mean, you know, he doesn't. There's so many times where, you know, he reassures me and tells me, he's like, you know, I don't really care about your little stomach fat. You know, it's like, first of all, you gave birth to my son, mm. you know, so and you're, you're, the, you're the mother of my child and I love you for, you know, these reasons, it, it, you know, and I love your body and I love who you are. So, I mean, a person can only do so much for you. Your partner right. can only do so much for you when it comes to your self-esteem issues, but you have to deal with those on your own and you have to work on them on your own. But um, self-esteem issues, like if, if you have self-esteem issues and she has self-esteem issues and you're both like, mm, you know, turn off the lights, let's be fully clothed, there's definitely an issue there, you know, that needs to be talked about. So again, it's about that comfort level, okay. you know, and it's about that communication. So if your partner knows what your self-esteem issues are and you know hers and you guys are able to communicate and be like, look, you know, this kind of makes me feel like shit. You know, I don't want you to look at me a certain way. I don't want this to affect our sex life or, you know, I don't, I don't want you to look at me and be like, damn, you know, I can't, I can't have sex with you now because of this. I mean, there's, if a person says I can't have sex with you because you, you know, you're a little bit overweight or, you know, yeah, that's kind of shitty. That, yeah, that's then that that's not the person for you. Right. You know, but again, communication and comfort levels. You can share your self esteem issues with each other, and you can help each other and push each other, you know, towards a more positive, you know, result. But you cannot expect your partner to work on your self esteem issues. Right. Um, unfortunately, a lot of people make that mistake, and then um, they get hooked, you know, and then they're always. They're, they're having really high expectations, expectations that a lot of people cannot provide. 
you know, so you have high expectations of your partner and, you know, you're like, hey, you know, I feel like shit. Why aren't you, you know, okay, do, now I understand. Right. Do, do something about it, you yeah. know, okay, that that kind of that kind of thing, you know, but you have to you have to work on these things most definitely on your own. Gotcha. And, you know, having help is always a plus, <laughs> but they, you know, your partner should not be responsible for your personal self-esteem issues. Um, they shouldn't be bringing you down and Naturally. they need to be pushing you forward towards, again, a positive result. That's more of a, do you see that more with women then? Like the self-esteem, you know, with social media and, uh, you know, just the, 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 the standards, you know? So, yes. So I, I definitely see that mostly um, with with women. I think men tend to hide their self-esteem issues a lot more. Um, but yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, men, men tend to hide it a lot more and they don't really talk about it. Can't confirm. Yes. <laughs> um, and that is, that's a big problem because men need to talk about these things too, mm -hmm. you know, and women need to be more supportive of that and allow men to talk about it and not just, you know, tell them like, Hey, fuck you. You know, it's all about man me. Up. Yeah. Like man up, you know, it's, it's okay for a man to be emotional. It's okay mm -hmm. for a man to cry and, and let certain emotions out. Right. You know, um, it's not okay for, for a woman to tell her man, like, look at you, you know, you fucking piece of shit. You're crying. What kind of man are you? Right. You know? So, but yeah, I mostly see this with women. Um, women, because of the, industry standard of what a woman is supposed to look like and how the world is just spewing garbage onto women a hell of a lot more than they are towards men. Yes. Um, you know, you have the Kardashians and you have all these, all these, you know, it's like, this is what a woman is supposed to look like. It's like, no, this is what the Kardashians look like. This is right. not what a woman is supposed to look like. Which is not even attractive to me anymore. At this right. Point. And like. so, it, yeah. And of course, you know, everybody has different tastes, beauties in the eye of the beholder, but you know, magazines and, and, and newspaper articles and TV and Facebook and Instagram models, you know, like it, no, these expectations are not real. That is not a, most of the time, this is not what real women look like. And if they do look like that, they've obviously had certain enhancements done, mm -hmm. you know, um, not to say EBLs. that they're, yeah. And not to say that there EBLs, aren't sculpting implants, you know, right. Yeah. Injections, fillers. And again, not to say that there aren't women who are naturally beautiful and have naturally beautiful, perfect curves and are, you know, the perfect amount of curvy and skinny and, and all of that. But again, it, the beauty is in the eye of the beholder, right. you know, and it's the same thing with men, you know, like a man is not supposed to look just like David Beckham, you know, like that's not the perfect, you know, standard of male, male beauty. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, it affects women a lot because women have to keep up with this. They feel like they have to keep up with it. It's like, holy shit, you know, Kim looks so much better now. I, I should, I should lift this or let me remove my chin fat and bu buccal, whatever fat removal. Let me have, <laughs> you know, and, and let me plump up my lips and let me get, let me get, well, now it's not about boobs anymore. Now, now it's about the ass. So let me get my ass done, you know? So they, they feel like they have to try to keep up with this standard and it's putting so much pressure on them. It makes them extremely, um, insecure. It, it, it's, I feel like a lot of it is themselves just trying to look good for women now. Definitely. You know, it's like guys <laughs> yes. don't care about the huge, la like I know, the hu really huge lashes. Yes. I just think they look so goofy. Yes. You know, when they're like, I, like I out goofy. there, like really like, Oh, you know. okay. <laughs> <laughs> like they're about to fly off. Yeah. Yes. Like they're yeah. Doing this. Yes. You ever see that one video where the girl's on the speedboat and fucking <laughs> no, Oh it's, my goodness. I didn't see that. <laughs> it looks so goofy. And it's just, and it's like, they're doing it for, for the women. Right. So they, cause it's like almost like they're in competition with each other. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That is the case. Right? A lot of times. Yes. Oh, that's that, that is the case. Me. A lot of times. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I personally, I don't know. Some guys are into it. Like they're into like, you know, the bolted on look, but I'm just kind of like, not really. Like I look at the Kardashians nowadays, like I'm just kind of thinking like, you guys look way better 10 years ago. Like <laughs> Courtney, you look better when you were thicker. <laughs> yeah, they were actually very naturally beautiful Armenian women. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know why they 
took the step further, but hey, to each their own. I mean, if whatever, if you if that's do. what's making the money. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, what are some common issues that uh like kind of destroy relationships? Other than communication that, that you see, right? Yeah. Other other than communication. Other than lack of communication, yeah. Um, I think a lot of um a lot of people, especially after they enter marriage or like. Yeah, after after they get married, a lot of people tend to um, just let themselves go in a sense where they, and I don't mean physically, I mean they they forget. So from like let's say from a woman's perspective, a lot of times like when you know they get married and they're like, well, you know, I got him now, he's mine. I'm mm-hmm. I, I married him, so now I can just you know go back to being myself <laughs> and. Um, you know, just kind of, it's okay. It, fine, I'll give you a blowjob later or tomorrow, <laughs> or, you know, we'll have sex later tomorrow. I think a lot of times women, um, again, I'm not going against women in any way, shape, or form because it goes both ways, but starting off with women, a lot of women are, um, you know, when there's no children involved, they will a lot of times just forget about their partner, um, you know, and just kind of focus on other things. When there's children involved, it's a whole different story because a yeah. woman is doing 10 different jobs in the household. Yeah. You know, and if she's not getting the proper support and help from her man, you know, to relax and breathe a little bit, um, you know, and feel like she's not going absolutely insane. And, you know, for him to, to, to help her and be like, hey, relax. Let's, you know, let me make you a bath. You can get in the bath, you know, and things can get romantic and intimate and not sort of like, all right, you know, turn around, let me stick it in, let's do a quickie, real, you know, real quick yeah. type of situation. Then she feels even shittier. Yeah. You know, um, from the, from, from the men's side, you know, a lot of times men will get so focused on work and finances and, you know, all these different things going on in their life. Um, most of the time, and this is so disappointing, but it is what it is because people should live different lives. But this is the day and age that we live in. A lot of, you know, men tend to get so focused on their careers and like, you know, paying the bills of the household that they, w- they will forget about their wife and, you know, the basic needs. Um, so that's kind of, you know, I think the more common version of, um, to, to, to answer, to answer your question. Um, I think when people enter a marriage, a lot of times they'll just kind of forget what they had when they were in the relationships or they just get too focused on other things and, um, there's no time for them. Yeah. And time needs to be made, you know, especially even if like, especially when you have kids, um, it's so, so hard for women and for men because you're so focused on your children and your child, especially when they're newborns, when they're toddlers, oh, you're so yeah. focused and you have a zero time for yourselves. Yeah. And so it's so, so important for people again, to be able to sit down and like talk to each other and be like, man, you know, like let's. Let's, uh, you know, spice things up. Let's bring back that fire that we had, you know, even if we don't have, like, we don't have a lot of time for it now, but hey, let's make the time. Yeah, get you a know. babysitter, have a date night. Yes, absolutely. It's so important to do that. Yeah. So important. Even if you don't help, you, if you don't have help from like, you know, parents or grandparents, whatever, you know, family around, get a freaking babysitter. Make that date night, you know? I was talking to a coworker um, who recently was like kind of like on the brink of like getting divorced um it was during the it was during the quarantine um so you know they're cooped up in the house with each other uh, on top of that they had a new they had a they had a i don't know how old the child was but let's just say it was a newborn at the time um so they're navigating through quarantine with a new child um toddler let's say at the at, at the at the oldest um and uh, their marriage was just quickly falling apart, apparently. Um, she told me that they went through uh, couples counseling. Um, and they realized, they both realized that it was the kid that was, that they were super focused on. Right. Um, that they were just kind of navigating, not only on the, and on top of the fact that they were just kind of stuck in the same room with each other. So whenever they were just angry with each other, they were just like, they just had to be, stay, they had to stay there and just stare at each other like, 
Right. I fucking hate you. Yeah, but see, <laughs> but see, sex drive, sex drive also has a lot to do with this too, because you know, there's people who have obviously higher, higher sex drives. You know, some some people have lower sex drives. So, I think, um, you know, that that also can cause an issue with mm. couples as well. You know, because if you take like if, if I take myself for example like no matter what's what's going on in, in in our lives you know no matter how much stress there is I always try to make time for us you know and so my sex drive tends to be higher for example than than my husband's sex drive but we work on it you know we work on it so but then again this is about us sitting down and being like hey you know like I'm 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 not trying to hurt you in any way I'm not trying to offend you in any way you know I just I want to bring this to your attention can we try to work on it um so again like it I, I hate to be a broken record but it's all communication yeah it really is and yeah. most people don't know how to communicate with each other I'll admit I was there before like I said before I know I had a hard time expressing my thoughts and feelings because like it, Another thing about with me and relationships, like all my past relationships, I've always felt that I, as a man, my job was to just bend over backwards. And I think I told you this yes, before. I, yeah. It was just to bend over backwards and not just say shit or expect anything in return. Um, just stay there and support your woman and shut the fuck up and what's it called? Just don't expect anything in return. Because your job as a man is to make sure that she's fully supported at all times. Yeah, so if you ran into a sociopathic woman, she probably would have killed you. You're like the perfect candidate for a sociopath. <laughs> I mean, well, used to be, I guess, used to yeah. be the perfect candidate. I mean, yeah, like if, if you're and if a woman is is allowing you to be this way and like not giving you the proper support and telling you like, hey, that's, you know, like I'm here, too, and I'm here to support you, too. And like I'm here to help you, too. It's not all just about you bending over backwards for me. Mm -hmm. Like we're bending over backwards for each other. Yeah. You know, type of type of attitude. And if she allowed that, to, obviously, she just wasn't the right person for you. Yeah. You know, so like um, it's I've noticed that's a pattern among like just molding myself in a relationship um, with all my relationships. Uh, I tend to mold myself as well, so I can never really be myself. Yeah, and that's a problem yes. because it that almost like defines you being afraid of rejection. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. that's you know you're pretty much saying like don't don't leave me. I'll I'll mold myself into what you want me to be. And it's funny because uh, again that's exactly what the problem was. I was afraid of I was always afraid of rejection. Right. Um, never really handled it well. Nowadays I handle it just fine. Um, yesterday's fucking text. I just was I literally looked at my phone like that's a shame. Whatever. Got to go to work. <laughs> I, I hope that's the case i hope you're handling it better and I, I hope you're not you know i hope you're working on that yeah no definitely. i am i am for yes. sure it's it's a lot i need to work on okay <laughs> we all we all gotta work on things you know? yeah. yes definitely <laughs> what else we got nervousness with sex mental blocks can you scroll down Polyamorous? Uh, yeah. Those oh, yeah. Po like <laughs> those poly couples. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, like uh, multiple. Was, yeah, the third wheel, I always call it. <laughs> Ruffles? Ruffles? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Poly uh, so, for anyone who's not familiar with a polyamorous relationship or ethical non monogamous, um, what's it called? Basically, it's uh, a couple who introduce a third, uh, maybe sometimes fourth person into a relationship. Where everybody's uh, in agreement with it. Yeah, everyone is in agreement with them. Everyone's okay with it. Uh, and apparently they all love each other the same. Um, do you ever have those kind of clients? Um, I don't. I've okay. never I've never had um, I've never had anybody like that. I've met people like this. Okay. Um, I, that I've spoken to. I have uh, some friends in Utah that uh, are openly in these types of relationships. I think I only know one person that's actually in an open relationship like that. Maybe two, maybe two, but it was, so <laughs> it was very interesting because they're all very nice people. Okay. And they're not, they, they don't seem to have any bad intentions. Right. Right. 
Yeah. That's exactly how I feel too. <laughs> thinking about them, that's exactly what I'm thinking too. I'm just like, they have no bad intentions. They, right. They're not terrible people at all. <laughs> right, right. But exactly. But. <laughs> there's, there's that but, you know. Well, so let me ask you, like, do you think that it's natural? Do you think it's normal for people to be in those types of relationships? What do you think about that? I've been that? in open relationships. Okay. Where the girl doesn't know, my partner doesn't know that I'm in an open relationship. <laughs> no, no, no. I was, I was gonna joking. say I'm like right. exactly not an open relationship. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, so again, your question is so like, what do you think about this? Do you think it's natural? Do you think it's normal? Ah, uh, so I don't know. Like, or if you or flip the script, do you think it's natural or normal for a person to be monogamous to one person? Yes, that's that's so that's question. where I was gonna go with like. I can see how wanting more than just one can, like, it's easy for somebody to kind of, kind of fall into that, like, man, I'd like a little more, you know? I don't know if it's normal. I wouldn't say it's... But when you say you'd like a little more, right? does that mean you'd like a little more sex or more emotions from another person? I guess both. It could be both, right? I'm I'm not talking about just because it's not just, I mean, okay, say you're with somebody, right? And this person is just the sweetest, but there's nothing funny about her or just, you're just missing that, okay. like, kind of just like somebody you could goof with, right? This is just an example. And would you be missing that? Like, would you be needing that on the side? Like, would you be kind of, would you be looking for kind of like more of a connection? Well, that depends because if, if your girl doesn't have that goofiness that you're looking and you find that, and you're, you find that somewhere in another woman, right. but it's just the goofiness, right? That, that thing that you need, but do you need to fuck that other person just because they're, no, you don't need to, right? Okay. You right. don't need to, in right? This, but that's what case, I'm saying. Like, but, the, but now maybe somebody right maybe at some point you're in a relationship and you kind of just you want some something else you would maybe there's people who would who would say because i've had like i said i've had three ways right so like when i say say in one of those situations somebody's got to present it like oh could we invite somebody else you know how would that be you know obviously that's like me or the other person saying let's try it right so that's you wanting more, right? So in that case, it's natural. There's nothing wrong with it, right? Okay. Okay. Interesting perspective. Right. But now I'm saying like, yeah, if, if you're in a relationship and you love this person and, you know, they're enough, then, then they're enough, right? Right. Okay. Right? But, but, I mean, you've seen that before, right? Where somebody might need somebody else. Sure. Yes, I've seen it before, but it, there's there's a difference between wanting to just add somebody into your you know um, mm -hmm. into your bedroom, right, and have a three way you know once or twice even you know, and then that's it you know, as opposed to being in an actual relationship. Okay, you're saying like 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 because with there's the third people person, right like, with the third person. So like that, this is like a not a temporary kind of not, not a one time right, thing. Yeah. Oh, okay. No. That's, yeah. So like how. Okay. Are what you... I what I think that's that's normal. Yes. Uh no, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's for di different strokes for different folks. It wouldn't be normal okay. for me. So, c do you think that you can love two women at the same time? Ooh. And I Maybe. mean love. I mean love. Can you love two women at the same time? Like truly love them from the bottom of your heart, like you love them and you would do anything for them. Like these women are perfect in every way. Both of them, they're wonderful, and um, you, they I, both give you different things. But they, they. I both could see that happening. You. Okay. I, I, th I think I would be able to uh, be capable of loving two two women. Okay. Right. I've never had that situation where I loved two women, but I can see that. Right. Being. Like some possibility, like, yeah, possibility. Okay. not not something I'm looking for. Right. Per se. But I could see it as be, a possibility. Yeah. OK. What about you? <sighs> so honestly, like as soon as you asked that question, I just started thinking about I'm like, is it possible for me to love two women at the same time? And. Um, hmm. 
My gut is telling me yes. Um, because I've kind of felt like I've been there before. Uh, if it was just temporarily. But um, I don't know. I guess like it all falls down to a morality perspective of it for me to love two people because then I just feel like there is an emotional aspect to the cheating, right? If that makes any sense. Um, right, because you're just you're just so let, justifying say, cheating. You're just justifying cheating, right? Exactly. Right. right. So um, I don't know. Here, I'll say this. I'll say this to to kind of interject. Um, so for me, right, I f I feel like after because I've been married and divorced, I feel like after what I've been through it, at, in marriage, to me kind of really looking for a bond has been something that I've focused on. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. I really need a bond. I really need a real, like, I'm just saying it sounds cliche. I need a connection. Right. Like I need to feel like, like this is a badass person right here. Mm -hmm. Like I don't just love them. I like them. Right. Right. And I think, I think in, how can I say this? So, Dating, dating after, after I broke up with my ex, with my, um, ex-wife, I noticed that a Fucking lot of, sucks. listen, no, 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 a, a lot of, a lot of women, what I saw, a lot of women are looking for a situation. Okay. They want, they want a ring. Okay. They want somebody to just, you know, yeah, to, 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 to be there and, and provide Mm -hmm. They have kids and they want the, you know, are, I got I got my kids, you know, are you going to take care of us? Mm -hmm. Right. Or they're looking for some like a situation. Mm -hmm. Right. Or, or maybe they're getting older and they didn't have a family and they're at the point where I need that. Now, it doesn't matter with who. If you're down for it, I'm going with it. And it's so easy for people to fall into that. Like, yes, because I've I've had I've had I was on dates where. I was seeing women who who were just looking for that for a situation, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and 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 for me it's like hold on you got to get to know me first. Yeah, no shit. Right, right. <laughs> right. You got we got a vibe like it's got to be for real. Like if I'm gonna if I'm gonna get into a relationship with you, right, then then it's got to be right. It can't be just like you're looking for what I have. I yeah I have a lot to provide. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna lie, right. Yeah, I'm not I'm not six foot, right. I'm not bearded and, you know, like just the standard. Right. But I got a lot to provide. Yeah. Right. So, so it's, easy. it makes you feel better. You still look like a handsome bastard anyway. So. Oh, thank you. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Hans. So sweet. Right back at you, brother. <laughs> so, but like, I'm going, I'm going that route because thinking about it, Finding that one bond is so hard as it is just one with one person. Mm -hmm. I cannot, I cannot see myself finding two yes. that that I could fucking vibe with just like it's the same. Difficult. It's difficult. It's difficult. Yeah. It's, yeah. I, I, I need that. See, my first relationship, my first, my, my marriage was kind of tumultuous, right? Mm -hmm. So like there was a lot of bickering, a lot of fighting, a lot of disrespect, and so like I, I need somebody who who gets me, right? And and who 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 really who really wants, you know, what I have to. Yeah, to there, there needs to be Aside respect. from what I can, sh yeah. what, what I could throw at them. Mm -hmm. Right what I mean? Yeah, there, there needs to be respect. If there's, if there's no respect in the relationship and, and, you know, two, two couples are already starting to shit on each other in the beginning of the relationship, just yeah. that, that that's the chances of that working out are very, very slim. Yeah. So, so, yeah. so I guess, I guess looking at it, uh, at it from that angle, yeah. I, I wouldn't be able to. It's hard enough to find just one person who, who you really could just see yourself right. going the rest of your life with and, and thinking, oh, it's just going to, oh, yeah, I could fucking find another person. No, it's not, yeah. not going to happen. Well, I, just, uh, so I don't see that, that, that going that way. It's, so, again, so I have, you know, it's, it's I'm, I'm trying to be subjective and share my thoughts about mm -hmm. this. You know, obviously, a, a lot of what we've talked about tonight, some of it reflects on, you know, the work that I do, and some of it does not reflect on right. it. Some of it is just my personal opinion, and it does not reflect at all on how 
uh, any any of my patients are treated or spoken to or anything like that. I mean, I'm allowed to have my own personal opinion, right? So, <laughs> um, I haven't met too many people um, who are in uh, into these type of relationships that are um, emotionally okay. They they seem like they are, and they present themselves as they are, um, and generally they are good people. I mean, I I. I haven't met any shitty people, okay, that that are in these types of relationships, but they don't, um, they are not emotionally fulfilled in any way, shape, or form. Okay. And so I can see that with one of the two people that right. I know they're. And I don't think that they ever will be. Depends on the situation, of mm-hmm. course. You know, I'm I'm not judging anybody in that way, but it's hard because again, I haven't had any patience you know, like this, but the people that I have met that are in, you know, these relationships, emotionally, there's an emptiness in all of them and they will continuously keep looking for something to fulfill them and they'll just keep looking for it. Okay. Yeah. You know, so <laughs> like yeah, if I, if I told my husband now, like if I'm like, Hey, let's, you know, bring someone in, he'll literally get the gun out and be like, who <laughs> you know yeah sure um, bring them in <laughs> yeah br- bring them in you know like from right here at the front door yes <laughs> you know and the thing is like even if i said let's let's bring a girl he'd mm-hmm. be like no fuck no hmm. there's no fucking chance in hell you know like he and like we've talked about this before and he's like fuck no it's like you're perfect for me you're enough for me i don't need any of that he's like i don't fantasize about that because you give me plenty of what what i need you know and what i want um so not everybody is you know into that and not everybody can actually feel that way about like you said it's 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 hard enough to feel this way towards one One person person. let alone a second person and yeah to feel love and care like you know just like you care about two people of course you know it's possible you can care about four people five people but to be in a romantic loving sexual relationship with two people like that deep shit It's very, I mean, I haven't seen it. Nobody has proven it to me. I haven't sat down and analyzed these three people ever in my life to be able to see that this is actually possible if it is. And, you know, if you feel that that's the case um, and if, you know, I encourage you to contact me so I can sit down with you and and talk to all three of you because I'd love to um, actually... uh, just to, to talk to uh, <laughs> yes i'd like to just yeah but yeah i think in my from my perspective from my subjective point of view there's a no chance that i could love two men at the same time i can certainly love one man and be sexually attracted to another man or care mm. for another man but i cannot love two men at or the you same could time. love certain things about another person of course like, but to deeply be in love yeah. with two people at the same time i personally feel that that's not possible yeah yeah yeah, I, I'll have to agree. I'll have to agree. Like I said, you, you, you. If if we're talking long term, right? I'm talking about permanent, right? You're in right. love with that person. Finding one person is hard enough. Yes. And I, again, that's why I'm like wondering, like in my gut, like is it possible for, to, for a person to love two people at the same time? Um, my ex-wife, like I, I still love her. I I will admit that she will she will still be the love of my life. Um, but like for me to say that, like, I want to, if it's even possible to even rekindle things with her, like, I, I don't know. I don't think it is at all. Um, all things considered, but, um, what's it called? Like if I were to find someone else and fall in love again, like, would I still be in love with my wife? Um, in the same sense that I am in love with my new partner. You know what I mean? I don't. I don't know if that makes any sense. So, if you meet somebody else and you fall in love with that person, mm-hmm. um, and you start to deeply love this person, um, that love starts to grow all over your heart, all over your mind, all over everything, and so naturally, the love for your ex-wife will soon fade. start to fade because yes. it's it's getting replaced by this new love. That you're feeling for somebody else so to be able to again 
I'm sure you'll always care for your wife, you know, yeah. and always have a certain love for her, you know, right. because you've shared certain moments together. But once that somebody new comes into your life and the love takes over, um, it's yeah. You yeah. Know? There's, I can say, for example, there is a female that I, that I do have love for, right. Um, that I never dated in my lifetime. It was, um, what's it called? Castro. I, uh, I've known her since third grade. Um, what's it called? And I, I have love for her, right? But I don't love her in that sense romantically. You know? Well, yeah. That, well, that, yeah. yeah, that's a different story, you know? Yeah. Um, there's, I, I've, I have a lot of people in my life that I really love, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Like just, I, I love them. Yeah. I really do. And I would do like anything for them. But romantically or sexually, not, not in that case. Right. I feel like yeah. romantically or sexually, like if that starts getting involved in that kind of love, then for me, it becomes exhausting. Like it's... I don't think it's um, what's the word I'm looking for. I don't think it's maintainable um, to keep up with that kind of romantic and sexual love with two different partners, uh, even if it was an open relationship. Because, like, in my perspective, I'm thinking immediately. You know, you have one person who has one set of needs, and then you have another person who has another set of needs. So now you have to split your time between these two people. Um, and fulfill both their needs, uh, whether that be sexual, emotional, mental, um, financial, whatever it might be. Because I mean, like, I'm going to assume that these two people are into two different, uh, two different worlds. Um, there's some stuff that might be overlapping between the both of them, which may be the reason why they might get along with each other. But I mean, like, I don't know. It just seems. Oh my goodness. The more I'm thinking about it, the more it just seems fucking exhausting. It is exhausting. <laughs> it's exhausting. It's exhausting to just oh my goodness, you know. It's, my my husband would always tell me, two, two women. Two two women. I'm already exhausted with you. That, to deal with another one. I just I can't do that. That's too much, you know? And I tell him the same thing. I'm like, yeah, I know how you feel. You know, because he's he's you know, he's a very emotional guy, you know, and he's 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 like just overly emotional a lot of times. You have to tiptoe around the fucking tulips with them, you know? Like, I have to be very careful how I present communication to him because he gets offended easily. <laughs> was, was, was he raised by just his mother? Yes, he was. I was talking to yes. Hans about that. <laughs> <laughs> the moment you were going there, I was I already was right there with you. I, I was George, like, I know what you're going. We're yeah. going with that. <laughs> you know Seinfeld? George I Costanza? Do, yeah, yeah. That's at, when he gets upset. My my friend Carlos, he always he always he always tells me he's like man he's like George Costanza you get so you get so worked up and I do, and I think it's because you know my mom my mom female she's emotional yes yeah, just course. raised by her and I mean I've had father figures and I have a father figure right but um but yeah it just it's a different it's kind a of very thing. Is. yeah very much is yeah. yeah yeah my husband I mean you know he comes from a, a divorced you know, family. Well, you know, his mom and dad are divorced, but he grew up with the mom and it's just, man, you know, like it's, it's so exhausting. It's exhausting sometimes because I have to, you know, like, cause I'm a very, as you can see, I'm a very direct, you know, very open person. I like to just say what I think right away. And with him, yep. you know, I have to sort something of, I've always appreciated. Yes. <laughs> It's yeah, you know we get each other. Yeah. <laughs> and with him, it's from just day like, one, it's something I've always appreciated about you. Yeah, you're just very direct, just straight to the point. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think that's how. I mean, I would love if everybody was like this. Life would be so much, so much easier. It's but. okay. I, I get your husband too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I can. You know, he's just. I have to like. I have to be direct with him, but I have to put a little ribbon on it. Yeah. You know, and, and that's me. <laughs> and make Say it to me nice. <laughs> Right. Tell me talk the truth. To, talk to me nice. But be nice. Yeah. Talk Damn. to me nice. Well, that's exhausting for people like us. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's exhausting for people like us. I demand us. it. <laughs> I demand it. <laughs> oh, and you get it. Of course you I get, get it. it. But yeah. it's exhausting. I, oh, yeah. No. And I'm aware it's exhausting. I'm, I'm aware that it's. Yes. Yeah. You got to tiptoe. Yeah, but that's just how I am. Yeah, yeah, he tells me too. He's like, "Yeah, I know, I know, I'm, I'm exhausting." I'm like, "Yes." <laughs> now give me a massage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not easy. It's not easy, but yeah. But we're loving. Yes, very much so. Because because of that. Very much as so. well. Yes. <laughs> that I gotta give you. You're, you're, you've always been kind of watching my back. 
and always trying to pull me out of the house. <laughs> do my best with everybody. That's how I am. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. <laughs> well, I feel like there's a chemistry going on between us right now. I know. You're so sexy. <laughs> <laughs> so fucking hot. Oh, but to... but not between the three of us? I mean, Just the two of us? I mean, you could be included, maybe. So polygamous I mean, relationships are out. Okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we want to uh, experiment with a polygamous relationship now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let me just call my husband, make sure he's okay with all four of us. Five of us, because you have a girl. Okay. Great. Let's move to Utah. <laughs> So I remember you were talking about earlier about um, that you had a higher sex drive than your husband. Yes. Um, not to get too personal with uh, you guys in the bedroom, but uh, how do couples navigate around that kind of situation where like one person has a higher sex drive than another? Well, I mean, like my husband and I, we, we, we do talk about it a lot. I mean, we've had, we've definitely had fights about it. Well, fights, I guess more arguments than, than fights. He's like, um, you want too much. Well, I don't have this. He just, he's not, um, he was never really like, of course he has a sex drive, you know, right. we, you know, we have sex, you know, but for me, there's at least one evidence of that. Right, yeah. No, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, yes, we, we do have sex, but yeah. And so for me, it's, you know, I, I've never, I'm not the type of person that will ever cheat on any of my partners. I've never cheated on any of my partners ever. If I have to cheat, I'm, I'm just going to leave the relationship because then it's not, you know, like there's, there's no reason as to, in my opinion, there's no reason why anybody should be cheating. If you feel like you have intentions to cheat or at some point are going to want to cheat, just don't even get into a relationship. Um, just don't even put yourself in a, in a place where, you know, you're going to have these intentions you're gonna, and, and you're going to eventually hurt the person that, that cares about you and that you care about, you know? So, um, we like, for example, with my husband and I, it's, it's kind of, we're, we've, we've been working through this throughout the years. This is not something that just happens overnight, you know? Um, this was presented to him, for example, you know, just like anybody would present this, I'm hoping to their partner and say like, Hey, I, I have a, a higher sex drive. I, I would like for us to, you know, fool around more, or at least, you know, do some more stuff. It doesn't have to be sex, maybe something else, you know, but I, I'm in, I'm needing this, you know, right. is there, is there something that you can do to, you know, maybe work on it a little bit, you know? And, you know, he'll, he would come back with, with, I mean, truly, he was just exhausted all the time from work, you know. And so at some points there was, you know, there was times where in those circumstances I was asking for too much, you know, from him. And I had to kind of just like take it a notch down and be like, shit, you know, I am asking for too much. He's fucking exhausted. He's working all the fucking time. You know, he's coming home. He's not in the mood for sex, you know, so get your shit together, go buy yourself some more toys and have some fun with yourself. <laughs> let's, let's include some self-love because self-love is so important. It's huge. Right. Yep. And I recommend self-love to every single person, especially men. You want to last longer? Self-love. Definitely. Definitely self-love. Um, so, you know, I, we, we sort of made this compromise you know, him and I, where it's like, okay, you know, I'm going to have more fun with myself and, and you, whenever you can try to add more, you know, fun and, and join me. And that's exactly what's been going on in the last few years. And we kind of worked on it, you know, a few times we had arguments back and forth about it. To be honest with you, it was me. I wasn't being understanding. I wasn't, you know, I had high expectations and I was like, well, what the fuck, you know, <laughs> am I not good enough for you? You know, do I not look good enough for you? You know, and I just was, was making it all about the ego and all about me, you know, and it just, I was being unfair and, um, I, I took it a notch down and I apologized, you know, and I, and I bit my tongue and, and then the moment I showed this to him and the moment he saw that, he became more understanding and said, okay, yeah, I mean, I know I'm tired and I'll, I'll, I'll try to make more time, even if it's not. Got to meet in the middle. Right. You got to meet in the middle, you know, and so compromise happens. So, yeah, um, again, you have to sit down and talk to your partner. There's, I mean, 
Nobody else is going to do it key. for you, you know. Unless, Y'all got to talk. Yeah, 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 you got to talk. You have to talk, you know. So that I wish I, I wish I kind of learned that a little earlier in my life about communication, at least especially with myself, like just trying to communicate about whatever I felt or thought. So I I do hope that you're going to do this. Yeah. From no, now. I'm. I feel like I'm in a much better place where I do. Um, even if I am over communicating with uh, with new partners, um, what's it called? Fuck it, you should over communicate. And that's kind of how I felt because, like, I just kind of feel it. Just kind of what's it called? Filters out like what I don't want. Um, yes, and you need to know what you want and what you don't want. Mm-hmm. Definitely, you know. And pe- and 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 th- this goes both ways. You know, I don't only say this to women i say this to men too but a woman has to deserve you too you know she has to earn earn you know yeah your trust and respect and your love and everything you know mm-hmm. it definitely goes both ways 100 percent for sure yeah you know men are not you know welcome mats that you can just step on whenever you'd like and and women a lot of women have this you know thought in their head and it's like that's not how you treat a man you know just because you're a woman and you got tits and an ass and you know a vagina this is not how you treat a man yeah so <laughs> i uh preach mm-hmm. it's true <laughs> I, i'm not gonna lie like i think that's a part of this frustrating with me about online dating is that like i see a lot of the same shit that like george was talking about like how they're just looking for a situation right how they think just because they have the looks that like that's perfectly fine <clears throat> and i'm just seriously like looking at these women i'm just kind of like I, you already look fucking boring you're hot as fuck but you're fucking boring right and i don't even want to fucking bother even saying hi <laughs> yeah yeah i mean if you're if you're um if you're looking for somebody to take care of you financially, um, again, you, why wouldn't you just, that just pretty much means that you're not going to do anything. You're just going to sit there and you're just, you're just going to fuck someone for your bills to be paid technically. Yeah, right. Which, I mean, you can just, that so you might as well, fans, I guess just like might as well do it professionally. <laughs> okay. I mean, if you're, if it's money you're looking for, then if you want to, then fuck someone for money. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so there's plenty of 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 you know respectful and clean sex workers out there. Yes, you know if that's sex what you is, want. Sex work is work. If it's you're fun. gonna use a man just for his money, that's really sad. I think, yeah. you know, it's not even just like money. Like it just kind of just feels like a lot of the times they expect like the man to just like you know. Yeah, to, it's to just do that expectation yeah. nowadays. You know, yeah. it's like the guy has to. You know, give, 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 give. Well, the, the, there's the expe- expectations from the from the you know a man side as well oh, because course. because if he want if he expects a woman to be at home with three children and cook and clean and do everything where she's doing twenty jobs, um, well then he better fucking provide oh, yeah. for, right. for the yeah. household. <laughs> you know, he better be out there working his ass off. So because he's only doing one job and she gets to do everything else. Yeah, yeah, no. You know, and this I, I always been a. a, a, a like it, of the opinion that the household stuff, it's got to be split down the middle. It has to be. It has to be. Absolutely, yeah. I agree. for sure. I always agree with. I agree with that too. Like it need the household stuff needs to be split in the middle. Whether if you're in a kind of like dink kind of like a relationship, or if you have children at all, um, right. what's it called? Like nonetheless, like it, anything in the household needs to be split in the middle. Like yeah. Well, I mean, unless yeah. too, if the if the girl if the woman is is at home or the man right is at home. Uh, and they're not working. That's that's also you know you want to they they're gonna take obviously more of the load, but it doesn't hurt to like after dinner you know wash the dishes. Absolutely. You know or like Absolutely. clean up. Yeah, or no. put she stuff cooks. Away. You wash the dishes. If uh, what's it called? Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. it's if you're gonna do it, if you're gonna do it half and half, it's not fifty fifty. It's one hundred one hundred. That's it. Like exactly. That's cool. that's how you do it. And and I had I had this conversation with my husband one time and one time only. And after that, that was it, you know, and like, and I clearly specific, I'm sorry, babe, I'm sorry. I clearly said, like, I'm not going to repeat myself. This is it. So you want me to also pay for half of the bills, which I do. I have no problem. I will work. But you want me to also take care of our son and cook and clean and, and do everything. And you also, you know, put in the 50% of the finances, but you come home and you watch TV. No. Yeah, no, 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 no. And that was, that happened once, 
I let it, I let it go on for, for, you know, some time just to see how far it was going to go. And then I stopped doing dishes. I stopped cooking. I stopped cleaning. I literally just worked and, and spent time with my son. And when he asked, he's like, well, where's, you know, where's, where's my clean shirt? I said, I don't know. Where is it? <laughs> I can only imagine. I, I'm not sure, you know? And he's like, well, well, what's for dinner? I don't know. What are you making? And so like, I ate. Yeah, like I, yeah, of course. And so I, I only had to have that conversation once with him. And, and after that one time he, he got the clue and, you know, saw, saw my hard work that was put in, you know, not only as, as, as somebody that's working, but as a mother, you know, and, and as his wife and, and, and then he's like, shit, I'm sorry. It's <laughs> never going to happen again. You know, please forgive me. And I'm like, that's great. What are you cooking tonight for dinner? <laughs> right. Well, we still haven't no, no, answered no, no, this no, question. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, I mean, again, like these things have to be talked about and like you shouldn't allow anybody to overstep, you know, these things ever. Yeah. If you're going to do things half and half, if you're going to have certain expectations, these things need to be talked about. 100%. You know, so man, we just, it's all about communication. It Number is. Number one. It really is. Number yeah. one. So if there's anything you can walk away with in Valentine's Day, it's about communication. Yes. Or Singles Day, whatever you're celebrating. Yes. <laughs> and meet in the middle. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Compromise. Compromising. But compromise should never be something that is uh, affecting you in a negative way. Yeah. If yeah. yeah, if compromise is going to affect you in a negative way, then it's not it's not true compromise. It's mm -mm. you know if you're going to shit on yourself to you know satisfy somebody else, that's that's not the way to go. Definitely. Not literally, people. Not yet. Yeah. Please, please don't poop on other people. Unless that's your kink, then <sighs> to each his own. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you get a lot of these like seven year itch kind of couples? You heard of the seven year itch? I have, yes. Is that like, is that for real? Like, no, it's not. It can happen at any time. It it's, could, right? Yeah, it's not. But do you see it more so? Like down the line, like seven years, six, seven years. Um, only sometimes. Um, I do. I do get um, a lot of. Oh, I hate to say this, but a lot of women who, um, again, cannot orgasm, um, and then they will. They will cheat. And orgasm somewhere else. <laughs> okay. Um, because oh, my husband's always gone. He's always on business trips. He doesn't pay enough attention to me. Um, you know, just stuff, stuff like that. You know, like, I guess things that aren't really, that weren't really an issue to begin with. And all they really needed to do was just sit down and talk with their man and be like, hey, you know. I need some. Yeah, I need okay. some. Some of the old... <laughs> you know, or I'll have just really... I mean, again, I'll have women who, you know, have very rich husbands. And they'll come and they'll, they'll be very upset and say, well, you know, why did um, my friend's husband buy her a Jaguar? And oh. I didn't get a Jaguar for my husband for our anniversary. <laughs> you know, like stuff like that. Okay. Um, <laughs> so can't really say those are real real problems you know no those are definitely first world problems For, first world problems <laughs> yes um but there's you know there's there's couples who come in literally just for um just advice on how to spice things up yeah where they don't really have any you know major issues they just they want some advice on how to spice up their love life and that's as far as it goes where you know? the flame kind of fizzled a little bit yes yeah. yes and they just kind of want like some new ideas and how to make you know freshen things up a little bit so but yeah gotcha. i don't know why i find it wild that, like so i guess i've only come across one woman who never in her life had an orgasm with anyone else in the bedroom she's had orgasms by herself but like never had an orgasm with anyone else in the bedroom. And I just thought that was just absolutely fucking wild to me. I don't know why. Like maybe because I'm just not that much of a selfish person in the be bedroom. I prefer that the woman orgasms first before I do. Um, but like, I, I don't know. I just find that wild. 
What's the statistic? I don't know if you said the statistic earlier on that. Like, what is it? It's like between sixty to seventy percent of women, not not orgasm. So, like a lot of times when you've so had encounters with you know with girls, <laughs> if they said they've orgasmed, chances are that they probably haven't. Not because you weren't good enough, or because of the size or anything like that. It's most of the time because they. They just, they have a hard time orgasming with anybody. And it's that comfort, you know, that comfort thing that we, that we talked about. Yeah. You know, some women have it real easy, you yeah. know, they yeah. can orgasm at any time with anybody, you know? Oh, yeah. Mm. Um, so some, some women have it, have it very easy. And, and most of the time these women are very, you know, secure about themselves and their bodies and they love their bodies and they, they, you know, they like themselves and they have no problem with that. You know, um, I, I personally know a female who, um, can orgasm while driving a car in the middle of traffic if she wants to, um, she like just at any time with anyone in any situation, that's how easy it is for her. And she is one of the most just free spirited people I know. She's, she's beautiful. She's got a great body. She, she knows this. She respects her body. She loves herself. She respects herself. And I feel like that is very closely related to that. Okay. You know, so. Um, the, the confidence. Uh, the, it's the confidence. The, yeah. The self-confidence really. Self, self-confidence. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It, it plays a huge role for a woman. It really does. Because for women, it's mostly a mental thing. You know, mm -hmm. it's a mental, emotional thing. Right, yeah. It, of course, it is also a physical thing. You know, for, for you boys, it's, it's, it's mostly a physical yeah, thing, just, you know. Right. But for us, it's more, more so up here, you know. Um, mm. So, yeah, if you ever see, they used to, like, they did this, you know, MRI of, of, uh, a woman like what happens to the brain and how it lights during up when orgasm. she yeah during orgasm and it's just like it's crazy yeah. it's, it just lights up all over the place you know um and it, it does the same thing for for a man but not as much lights up down there right? <laughs> <laughs> like, <Yes>. sparkles it's <laughs> more of a night light <laughs> as opposed to you know a, a, a headlamp <laughs> a, a beacon of light yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah <My so>. house. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah yeah all right well i think uh i think we've had a fun time yeah definitely had a yes. great conversation for sure <laughs> yes um again valentine's can you do you have any i mean obviously maybe just get them a give them a recap of you know uh how we can uh go about enjoying our couples our partners our ourselves more and uh loving each other more this uh valentine's day what advice do you have for all these Viewers are millions of subscribers. <laughs> yes, millions upon millions. Okay. Yeah, for for Jay and Beyonce who's watching and oh, yeah. yes. and J Lo and Ben. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, okay. Jay and Beyonce really need the advice. What can you tell them? Man, um, <laughs> Will and uh, Will and Jada. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> they, they really need the advice. <laughs> oh man. Wow. Well, my advice would be romance, intimacy communication trust respect comfort and not just on valentine's day every single amen. day amen to that yes um if you cannot talk to your partner you need to try to learn how to for the sake of the relationship talk to each other communicate your issues to each other without allowing anger to get in the way or frustration or or fear yeah without allowing that to get in in the way i think always listening to your heart and going into these conversations and in into this with with love with pure intentions is is the way to go even if you're frustrated or or angry or sad um, if you love each other then do it from a place of love definitely amen to that and for those of uh of of the viewers and us who uh need are looking for counsel or want some help where could we find you 
I'm currently only licensed in the state of Colorado, oh, okay. <laughs> so I can only really uh, give free advice always. Um, but uh, to have somebody as, you know, a patient, it would have to be in Colorado, unfortunately. Okay. Um, but I'm always here to give free advice um, to anybody um, that is looking for it. Where can people reach you, like on uh, IG or social media? Yes, or? yes. You can find me on Instagram as Lola Sings. Um, and I do sing as well. <laughs> <laughs> but yes speaking of which uh what about the band can they find them on uh on instagram at all? you you can find yeah i mean i usually always put put some clips on uh, on instagram on on facebook like you mentioned earlier i do a lot of covers and stuff like that yeah. Uh, but yeah you can find uh all that on instagram and on facebook and if you do need advice you can always feel free to hit me up on there what's the band's handle on, I on ig and or um, how do we find you so Facebook? usually it's just it's me it's always okay yeah okay. We, lola sings. yeah, <laughs> yeah right. lola sings on instagram and ivana lola saliper on facebook awesome yeah and with that we'll close Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Ivana. Thank you, guys. It was really fun. Thanks, Hans, for putting this together. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Hans. We Thank were waiting for a long time to have you I in. Know. I think this is a perfect way. Thank yeah. you. For sure. <laughs> Thank you for your patience. And yeah, thank not you for a problem. Having me. You're a busy woman. I get it. Between <laughs> work, uh, your husband, the baby, uh, traveling back and forth between Colorado and Chicago. Like <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Wonder <laughs> Woman. So. Yes. yes. <laughs> thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. And thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thanks, everybody, for being here with us. Thank you. We'll catch you on the next one. Doses. Hey, you filthy animals. Whoops here from the SOS team. Yeah, I got a quick question for you. If you like a little bit of this and a little bit of that, hit the like, share, and subscribe button. How you like that? And don't forget about my man Hans back there.